Hi there, this is Ryan Schultz, and welcome to Metaverse Newscast, where we interview the people behind social VR, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. I'm very pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Zauberfloat, who is the creator of this beautiful and romantic experience we are currently in called Bedouin Nights. Hello, Beverly. Hi, Ryan. So happy you had me today. Thanks. My first question for you is, did you get your username from Second Life? I did. Um, it was back when you could pick out of a list of last names. And I, I remember the those days. One. Yeah. Well, Zauberflot means magic flute in German, I think. That's right. I think and it uh, it's actually a lovely name. Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got started in virtual worlds and what brought you to Sansar? Um, I used to be a big player of games like Myst, and uh, my husband at the time heard of Second Life and mentioned it to me, and I went and checked it out, and that was the beginning of <laughs> a lifelong obsession with uh, virtual worlds. And I spent a lot of time there and in open sim, and then from there I came to Sansar about probably two years ago. And once here, I just couldn't believe how beautiful things are, and that is what got me hooked. So pretty much I Sansar only now. So looking around Bedouin Nights, I want to ask you, how much of this did you make yourself and how much of this was assets purchased from the Sansar store? Um, none of this was assets from the Sansar store, but the camels I purchased off of Turbo Squid and then I rigged them and animated them. Oh, um, wow. And then the palm trees, I believe they were freebies on Turbo Squid that I got many years ago. Uh, everything else... Uh, that is a model is something I created. Um, the skybox is something I bought off Sansar, so I take that back. I did buy the skybox, and all my skyboxes come off the store. Okay. So what software tools do you use to create this content? I use Blender and okay. uh, Paint.net, and then I recently purchased Substance Painter, which I've been using for the last probably six or seven months. And then I use uh, freesound.org for the sounds that I download. So everything I try to use is usually freeware. Um, Substance Painter is the first software I've actually purchased, you know, to, to help create uh, the experiences. So that's new for me. I try to do it without having to pay. <laughs> I mean, that's a really good message to get out to people that may not be aware that there are so many excellent freeware and uh uh, shareware, mm -hmm. shareware, is that still a word? Uh, alternatives to uh, the more expensive products that the professionals use to create 3D content in virtual worlds. Yeah, and I can't say enough about Blender. Um, the things you can do with Blender are absolutely amazing. All the animations that I do are done in Blender. Like the camels? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I rigged those in Blender and then did the animations. Well, your level of Blender knowledge is definitely several several stages above mine. Yeah, it's not uh, intuitive at all. There's a steep learning curve, but and I was very frustrated with it in the beginning. I thought I'm never going to do mesh. This is too hard. And then I just started, you know, uh, trying to be a little more patient. And I went through a lot of tutorials, and I still do. I mean, it's a learning uh, constant learning curve with Blender but I just absolutely love it now. So tell me, Beverly, do you collaborate here with other people fairly often in Sansar? Um, my level of collaboration is usually when I need um, someone to come and look at my experience because they have a, a VR rig. I don't. I only have desktop. Oh, you're not in VR. Okay. Mm -mm. So I, I've asked people, you know, uh, in my circle of friends, if they would mind coming and seeing if things look too dark or too light or, you know, too glaring. Um, so that's the only collaboration I've done, the actual building and everything I do on my own. Kind of a, um, in real life and in virtual life, I'm a bit of a loner. Kind okay. Of, it's my way to unwind and, you know, recharge my batteries. So I enjoy working alone. Beverly, I noticed that there's a certain element of whimsicality and romance in all of your experiences. I would like to ask you, where do you get your design inspirations when you create a Sansar experience from scratch? 
Well, I would say without a doubt, it it really is rooted in my experience with the games I mentioned before. Um, Mist. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I am. I love there, Mist. Yeah, the the feeling of walking through those worlds is always in the back of my mind. I think, and always has been an inspiration and something that I kind of um, try to achieve. You know, that feeling of magic when you walk into uh, a virtual world for the first time. And they've definitely had a big impact on me. In fact, uh, one of my new experiences is really close to some of the feelings I got from those games, trying to make that a reality. We've changed locations into this beautiful tent. I feel like moving in here and having like a pole bowl of oranges to myself. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, I think people uh, know already about places like Second Life and Sansar is that you can be sharing an experience with somebody else who's physically located on the other end of the world. And so I want to ask you, as I've asked many other people before, where actually are you physically located on the globe? Uh, I'm from Northern California in the United States. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Close to the ocean or more in the mountains? More, um, I don't know if you know where Sacramento is. It's kind of in the center of the state. It's the okay. uh, capital of California, actually. Cool. cool. Yeah. And do you have a business in Second Life? Or did you have um, one? I used to, yeah. I used to have a store called Witchy Woman Designs. Ah, okay. And that's actually what got me started building. I actually uh, was building, and people said they loved my stuff and wanted me to sell it. So that's how I started uh, getting serious about building things in 3D. I think that was a starting point. Second Life was a starting point for many people who are now creators in other virtual worlds, such as Sansar. Mm -hmm. I think so. Beverly, what is it that you really like about creating for Sansar? Um, well, as I mentioned before, I love the lighting, and I love just how beautiful things look here. Uh, number two, the community here is very supportive. Um, in a lot of other virtual worlds, you'll find creators are a lot more competitive with each other uh, and not as willing to share, you know, in quotes, secrets. Um, and I found that not to be the case here. I found everybody to be very uh, generous and giving and just really a friendly, friendly group. Um, so I love that about, about Sensar. And also being able to actually interact with a lot of the people that work at Sensar. And, you know, they listen to the community and implement a lot of the things that we ask for. So it's it, community-wise, it's very, very generous, open, and very uh, giving. I do agree with you that the community here in San Sar is really one of the things that makes it very special. I only hope that they can hold on to that feeling as it continues to grow. And the other thing that's absolutely unprecedented about San Sar is the level of access that we have to the team at Linden Lab mm -hmm. through the Discord, through regular weekly product meetups. I've, I've said to people before, and I'll say it again. We, we should not take this for granted because as a, a virtual world like Second Life, for instance, becomes massively popular, you can't scale that kind of access no, to so your, your support team. After a while, for their own sanity, they're going to have to shut things down and make things more proceduralized. Absolutely. And so we should enjoy this while we have it. Mm -hmm. This is this. They tell me it was like this in the early days of Second Life as well with that level of access to Linden Lab. We have an unprecedented level of access right now that we should definitely take advantage of and enjoy because it's probably not going to stick around forever. So true. So true. Beverly, what kind of features would you like to see Sansar implement over the next year or two? You know, one of the things I would absolutely love to see is the ability for um, people, creators of experience, to be able to gift things to people either you know, in a game type atmosphere or you standing here that I would be able to give you something. Um, that will just seems to me make it so that the gaming part that where we can create little uh, adventures, quests, if you will, um, you could give rewards. I would love to see something like that. And the other thing I would like to see is um, some more uh, service type things added to the store for creators so that we have more interaction with um, 
our customers um, so that we can see, you know, if they have problems, they can make comments. Um, you mean then, other than just a simple rating system? Yeah, because the rating system, I don't know who gave me that rating. And uh, in my experience with other online stores, it's crucial if someone gives you a low rating uh, to hopefully get feedback from them or to ask them, you know, what was the problem you had? So that you can fix that problem and then, you know, give them a new copy or, you know, make it so that no one else has that problem. Actually, you raised a really good point there. You raised a really good point about that. Yeah, that the the store right now is... as it currently is, is all right. It's basic, it's functional, but we do need to have something that allows for more communication between the the buyer and the seller. Yeah, and that's the reason I've held back from putting more things on the store um, because I want to make sure, you know, that I have that ability to correct things as they come up. And also, um, you know, I'd like to be able to um, uh, put sits and stuff in my uh, couches and things, which is, they've added that, but, you know, when we have more sits, that kind of thing, um, I'd like to be able to add those to the store, but not until we've added all those features. Can you tell us a bit about the one we're in right now? This was the very first experience I created in Sansar. Um, That cottage that's behind us is something I actually created for OpenSim, Um, that was quite popular, and I've sold a ton of those. And so that was one of the first things I brought in to see, you know, how's it going to look in Sansar? And I absolutely thought it looked beautiful and and just fell in love with Sansar from that moment forward. And this is called Witchy Sandbox, right? Yeah, that was the uh, original name I gave this and just never changed it. Like I said, it was the very first thing I created. Why Witchy? Um, well, Witchy's from my Second Life days. Um, my store there was called Witchy Woman Designs. Ah, I see. And, okay. Yeah, so that's where it comes from. Beverly, what advice would you give to people who are interested in Sansar and want to create experiences for themselves and may not have a lot of experience in how to do so? Well, I know that Sansar provides a lot of very beautiful templates um, to start out with. And then, of course, there are lots of items on the store that uh, are free and or not that expensive um, that they can bring in to customize it to their own liking. Um, For those people who want to eventually create their own things, um, then I suggest they start looking at tutorials for the different 3D packages, uh, Blender being one that's free, um, and start out, you know, simple. Create something uh, simple like a chair, maybe. But I've really, that, there's a lot that's already here that you can start from day one to have a beautiful, beautiful experience. Yeah, I actually started off with one of those. Uh, I'm like, I'm a total beginner when it comes to Blender, and I basically taught myself enough using an older version to create a very simple table and then texture it. And mm-hmm. so it looked like, well, not hideous. Uh, but <laughs> and uh, and I have it sitting still in my Ryan's garden experience here in Sansara. I created yeah. a, t- a table first, and then I turned it into a chair, and I put put one of those out too. Yeah, and there are, and there are a lot of people who have no absolutely no interest in building things, and that's cool too. And that's what the store is for, and that's what the templates are for. So. Lots yeah, I'm of, sort of a born. Of sh- I'm sort of a born shopper as opposed to a creator. I think yeah. but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thank goodness for shoppers. That's what oh, creators yes. say. Yep. <laughs> what are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm working on. I actually have two experiences that are in the works. Uh, one is kind of a little Spanish town on this on the uh, lake or the sea, and I've kind of put that on hold for a little while. And the other one is a um, it's a mystical world, really inspired a lot by uh, Lord of the Rings, myths, those types of worlds, uh, which I'm having a lot of fun with. And it's going to have a lot of, um, you're not going to be able to just go anywhere without solving some puzzles. So that's also inspired by mist type games. So you're hoping to be able to incorporate the new questing features that have been added to Sansar at some point? Um, I would love to be able to do that. Right now, I'll just be incorporating things like uh, you'll have to pick up certain items, kind of like uh, what Metahue and Bagneria have done in a lot of their experiences. 
So, for example, uh, to get through a door, you might need to find a key or you might need to make a key. Um, that type of thing. Okay. Beverly, I noticed that you put a tremendous attention to detail in a lot of your experiences. How much, how much preparatory work do you have to put into something like, like this experience, for instance? Um, well, a ton. You know, it just depends on the experience. Um, this one, uh, you know, I use a lot of Google, Google images for my research and um, things like Bedouin Nights um, required a lot of a lot of different research for a lot of the items I've created there. Um, but I use a lot of images from Google Images to figure out how things look. And then I like to read about, uh, you know, whatever I'm creating that might be uh, specific to a, a culture or whatever and try and figure out, you know, what would they have here? What would actually be in this environment? So that's part of the fun of it, and it is time-consuming. But I really enjoy it. It's something I can do on breaks at work. So, Cool. Thank you. So, Beverly, we're in a new place right now. I believe you call it Winter Wonderland. Could you tell us a bit about it? Um, well, I created this uh, a couple Christmases ago, right after I had done my Halloween experience and was looking for something new to do. And I thought, well, Christmas would be perfect. And I found this um, skybox, which is the sky above us on the store. I think it was Nebulae who created it. And just fell in love with it and thought it really sets the tone here. Um, and I wanted to create a village where it would be um, like something you would put on your hearth at home, but you would be a little person in that village. So that was the um, inspiration for it. And then... I think I had just started using Blender for animation, and I created a sleigh that would take you on a sleigh ride around the experience. Do you set up to create a sense of wonder and magic when you're building your experience? A sense of wonder and magic in this particular experience is very strong. Um, I do, actually, and it kind of goes back to my inspiration for a lot of the things I do, being the games that I used to play. Um, and even Second Life, when I first came into Second Life, the sense of wonder for me and uh, some of those uh, worlds there was just incredible. And so, yeah, I definitely try and do that with, with my experiences. It's lovely. So do you enjoy it when people come into your experiences and play with all the interactive elements, like the so many, like the xylophones here in front of us and, and the sleigh and everything? Oh, Yeah. That is the payoff. Um, I love to create, but if I didn't have people to enjoy it and didn't get to witness that, um, it wouldn't be half as fun. Um, when I first came here, I noticed that people in VR like to pick things up and throw them, and I wasn't used to that. And that was one of the things I set about to do was to try and put that type of things in experiences so people would have fun just exploring and picking things up and throwing them or standing on things or whatever. So, yeah, that is one of the big parts of Sansar is seeing people's reaction and getting that feedback. That's that's one of the big reasons I do it. Great. Uh, we're getting a, a preview, a sneak peek of a, an experience that you're building right now. Can you introduce us to it and tell us a little bit about your design inspiration for it and what you were thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. Um I haven't named it yet, but my inspiration is all things Myst, Lord of the Rings, um, and games where you have to solve puzzles. Uh, so this will be uh, an experience where you won't be able to necessarily get to the places you see without first solving uh, a puzzle. And uh, it'll start with when you first come in, you'll be transported into this egg behind us, which is made of glass, and you'll have to figure out how to get out of it. Uh, before you can proceed. So it's it's in its very early stages. This is just a draft um, experience. I'm, you know, lots of stuff to go. Probably will be several months before I finish it. Um, but it will look uh, very similar in the feel of kind of that whimsical fairyland kind of feeling that I'm going for. Beverly, I'd like to thank you very much for taking us on a tour of your experiences. I have always enjoyed them from the first time I visited Bedouin Nights. 
And I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Thank you for watching Metaverse Newscast. We'll see you next time. I'm kind of working on the whole swinging my fist thing and then letting my hands go, you know. And and I know, I know. I really seriously, you should you should watch the first episode of Metaverse Newscast. I look like a T Rex. I swear, I, I just I look terrible, and I'm dressed like a Jehovah's Witness. It's really just horrible. So we had to work on this. Well, you look good to me. Thank well, you, you thank good. you. Yeah, like yeah, Galen was that, that interview was so smooth and moving and De Galen was like a total professional and I was looking like I was like the only the only comp, the only comparison comes to mind is just like totally uptight Jehovah's Witness. That's all I can come up with. That's how I look. So yeah.